Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You recall uh, again on March 30th, 2011, having an interview with Special Agent uh, Thompson? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, during the interview, do you recall uh, telling Ms. Thomas that um, you seen the police car sitting in the exit of the apartment, uh, apartment parking lot and you saw a red SUV sitting in the exit of the other apartment from the parking lot? Um. Now, they were, they were both in the same, like I said, T-bone. They were both together in the same. Could you show the jury T-bone, what you mean, a T-bone? Uh, all right, so the, the apartment on the right, the red SUV was coming out like this. Mm -hmm. Police car was looked like it was trying to pull in. So it was sitting kind of like this, and it looked like there wasn't enough room for this car to come out and the police car to come in. So somebody was going to have to to back up. So I'm kind of sitting there waiting on someone to make a move so that you don't have this log jam. Um, but I didn't say one car was here and one car was over here. Okay. They were both right here. Okay. So then the red car very slowly pulls on by and it pulls over to this other, um, there's an entrance to another condominium or apartments, but it's not straight across. It's kind of like down a little way. So they kind of pull here and then I'm, so I'm still, I'm behind the police car, so I'm waiting for them. Okay, now they got their chance to go on into the apartments, but they don't do that. They, I don't remember if they kind of backed up how they did it, because I'm, I'm driving, you know, so this is something that I'm seeing on and off. So I see a little bit of what's going on, and I'm looking at my car, and I'm looking at what's going on. But anyway, the police car ends up kind of turning, and it follows the red car over and pulls in beside the red car. Is it possible that a police car backed up and turned and got behind us? Do you recall it? Is it possible that he backed up and you got behind us? He could have. I, you know, they were, I remember they were both moving very slowly. That's and the one thing I remember. It was like, I mean, kind of like turtles. They were going real slow because I'm kind of impatient. I'm waiting to turn in there. I want to get on through that apartment complex and go home. Um, so I don't remember exactly how the police car made its turn, but it, it did not go into the apartments. It veered over and ended up parked kind of beside, but not exactly beside. The tail end of the police car, I believe, was a little farther back than the tail end of the red car. So you don't, you can't tell the jury today specifically how, they, how he turned it, but he backed up and turned around, how he got turned around. You couldn't tell us that today? Nah, he couldn't, he couldn't have backed up too far because I was behind him, so, but maybe he did a little bit. I, I'm not sure. And I never saw him really grab, but I saw him move away as if, as if maybe somebody was grabbing at him. Maybe the officer was grabbing him because he, um, the gentleman that was uh, there in the shorts and the light top, kind of did a little jerking motion away. But I interpreted that to be horseplay between two people that knew each other. Okay. Uh, did you see the officer exit the car when you seen me? Snatch to do whatever you saw. Did you see the officer exit that car? I never did see the officer exit the car, no. Okay. Uh, did you recall telling Ms. Thomas that you thought that was a simulated breach? 
later on, yeah, when I was um, not right at that moment, you know, when after after the shooting, everything took place. Like I mentioned before, being in the military, a lot of times you have drills that are very authentic, and because this whole scenario didn't seem to make sense, it happened at 1:30 in the afternoon. It seemed like these two people were friends or whatever, and all at once someone's shooting. I'm thinking maybe it's some type of drill um, for maybe the EMT people or something. I don't know. It's just a lot of things, uh, you know. It's kind of hard to believe it happened to start with, and then you start thinking, what's going on? Why did it happen? And, and all that. So that was one thing that went through my mind, yes. Okay, sir. Um, you were talk, Paul, telling this home that you had some concern, maybe somebody messed up with protocols in the I was concerned, uh, in fact, I mentioned this to her and the prosecuting attorney and several other people, for, at least for a couple of weeks, I was, I started playing things back in my mind and I'm thinking, you know, if I left that um, chiropractor's office about six seconds later than I did, instead of going down that road and making that right hand turn, I would have been right there. I wouldn't have made the turn yet and maybe the shooter shooting and turn and shot me. So I was, I was concerned that they let me go down that road if, if they thought there was going to be a some kind of confrontation, but you know, it's been four years ago, so I've forgotten about it. <laughs> and it's been explained to me, but I was, yeah, I was a little upset, I'd say, for a couple weeks over that. Um, sir, I don't know if you misheard me, but do you recall telling her that you were concerned about protocol? somebody messed up with protocol anytime somebody get killed something went wrong so you recall telling them that right i mentioned something about just the fact that i was you know first of all school teacher you have sort of guidelines you go by and as a military policeman you have certain protocol so if you you know if there's someone that's has a weapon that's uh, dangerous or whatever there's some steps you should take in order to get that situation under control. Uh, and one of those things is to make sure it's, you got the public safety uh, in mind. So that was, yeah, I mentioned that, right. Why, why, did you, why did you feel like somebody messed up the protocol? Why did you feel like that? I think you've already answered that question. telling her during your interview that you can read the newspaper and from what you saw then what they put in the newspaper is not right. Do you recall telling her that? I do. Could you tell the jury about that? Uh, well, it said... Uh, no, no, I, I don't think you can get into what may have been in the newspaper, Judge. It's uh, talking about the appearance of what happened and what he saw and didn't see. Like, I don't know. That you can ask another question. I don't know until I hear the question. So, you did state something about things that weren't right. From, you did state the things that you saw in the newspaper wasn't what you saw. Correct. Okay. Well, without getting specific, what you saw in the newspaper, what made you tear the agent at? I don't know how you can answer that question without following you. It's the same thing. So, so. How many newspaper articles did you read before you want to talk to Miss Thomas? Um, I mean, not many. Just, you know, the few days after it happened, uh, the description of the guy and different things. It was the time that was the time was off that they had the newspaper. Okay. Uh, do you recall Mr. Thomas telling you that they had no idea of Jamie Hood was on Sycamore Drive that day? That's hearsay. Uh, we to go into that, of course, and uh, whatever context something may or may not be said. You might be heard of him. He just did it when he read that whole thing to the jury about quitting reading. That was hearsay. Sarah Thomas and Quentin Ridley testified in this home here. So 
That's why, that's why I let him bring it to the jury so I can stop him from doing me like that. that you had control of getting your information out to law enforcement. Do you recall telling the agent that, that you had trouble getting in touch with people, telling them what you saw? I do. Could you explain that to the jury? Again, uh, well, my, my concern immediately that, you know, within a couple hours was to, to get in touch with somebody, and I had a hard time doing that since the, there wasn't anyone manning the phones or whatever. They wouldn't call me back, and then, as time went on, I was also more concerned uh, as a certified teacher, if I witness a crime, I'm supposed to report it. You can lose your certification if you don't. Even though I'm retired, I'm still certified and I might want to go back sometime. So I was concerned that at least somewhere it was recorded that I attempted to contact someone and give them the information that I'd witnessed this, this crime. And it seemed like I was having to, you know, contact a lot of people and nobody was contacting me back. I know how bureaucracies are, but, you know, after a couple of weeks, it got a little crazy. What do you mean by got a little crazy? Well, just mean? the fact that, I mean, I had to call the FBI and they, they uh, really didn't want to take my statement either. <laughs> so, uh, they just, they took my name and my number and said, we'll pass it on to the proper people, but, you know, I was ready to give a statement and it was like, you know, I want to tell what I saw in it while my memory's still fresh and, and all that and get this out of the way and get it recorded somewhere. And, uh, and finally it was on, what, the 30th, so that was eight days, I guess. It seemed longer than that, but so I guess eight days later they... Do you think because you've seen the officer come through the court when he grabbed me, that's why they didn't want to talk to you about it? That's a misleading question. That's not a question. Is it? Is it the information that you had to give? You think that they probably didn't like it because it might have reflected bad on yeah, that officer? That's a leading level? question, and, and it's hard to uh, Do you feel like it was fair that you were trying to give information what you saw in the police shooting incident that, that whoever you called didn't want to talk to you about? Do you feel like that was fair? I think it was just the bureaucracy and just the situation, maybe, because. Uh, you know, they didn't know when I was calling really who I was or what information I had. It just, they just <laughs> never bothered to contact me. Did, did they ever tell you anything about protocol? You were concerned about their protocol? Did somebody ever brief you on it to soothe your concerns about the protocol that you were concerned about, sir? Um, well, they said, you know, nobody knew that that situation was going to escalate, I guess, like it did. And that um, that's that's kind of about all I remember was that um, they didn't intentionally let me drive into something they thought was going to be dangerous. So. Do you recall telling um, Miss Thomas? Yeah, I remember saying that. Why do you feel how you think somebody makes a mistake? What do you think about mistakes? Well, obviously, there's some mistakes made somewhere along the line, or, you know, we wouldn't have had the situation that would turn out the way it was, so. Um, Is that what you meant by protocol, the, the mistakes and concern were revolving around protocol that was, you was, that was your concern, sir? Right. Um, yeah, I felt like, if, you know, from my past experience, uh, military police and so forth, if you thought there was a dangerous situation, you'd get, you'd get as many people as you can to try to control that situation before it escalates. Well, Mr. Kelly, you said, do you recall stating that when I was at the back of that car, you said we take a few nervous steps? Right. If in fact, if that was you, I, I mean, I saw the person at the back of the car. Yeah, take sort of a 
like they're trying to decide which way to go type thing. What, did, did you tell her nervous, Chef? Did you tell her, did you stay nervous in the video? I don't know whether I used the word nervous or not, but I, it was, you know, just kind of chooking back and forth like you're trying, you're going to go one way and then you go the other. Without playing this again, Austin, you said nervous to serve been so long that you've got could have been nervous. I mean, you can use that word. I, I mean, I don't know if the guy was nervous or not. <laughs> you know. Unfortunately, I would have got it. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Kelly, um, let me ask, first of all, I, I think you're uh, 67 years old, is that correct? Sir? Correct. And you lived in Jefferson, is that right? Right. Was that where you were living in um, 2011, was in Jefferson, is that correct? Sir? Yes. Okay. I live outside of Jefferson. but Outside yeah. of Jefferson. Right. But it's not in the Athens area, I guess, right? Right. It's about, I think, 12 miles or something. It's in uh, Jackson County? Right. Okay. And... Um, on uh, this particular day, I think you indicated that you were uh, over this way to go by the chiropractor a little bit after one. Is that right? That's right. And you indicated that you uh, turned down Sycamore after that, after you realized it was close, correct? Right, correct. And as I understand, uh, as you were doing that, you uh, were trying to look up uh, where someone lived. Isn't that correct? Right. I actually, the girl that I went to high school with in... Uh, West Virginia, actually, uh, I saw her address was Sycamore, and I, I knew that Sycamore was there close to my chiropractor, but I'd never been down that road before, so I was kind of curious as to what was down there, and just, you know, decided to go that way and s see what those uh, apartments look like, and I, sometimes I deal with rental property, and for some reason, I just went down that road instead of cutting out on the, sure. the broad. And that was Susan's Inn, right? Yeah, that's her name, right? And uh, that was a friend from high school, is that correct? That's correct. She didn't know you were coming down there at all. Like I that. hadn't spoken to her in 15 years, probably. I just had to see her address on uh, some literature that we had from our reunion. Down Sycamore. Right. right. Sycamore right. and Athens, and that's all I knew. Right. And uh, and so you were heading down that way to kind of just see uh, see what area that might be, whether that that might be the area she lived yeah. in, or what it looked like, I guess. Yeah, I mean, just cut down that way and going home rather than cut out and I think there was traffic on her, maybe a stoplight or something that brought For some reason, I just went down Sycamore instead of cutting out into, you know, it's just one of those decisions you make, not really thinking which, which road it take to get home. Right. So at that time, when you went down there initially, it wasn't to go ahead and cut through. It was kind of to check out Sycamore because there may have been an apartment building you might have an interest in. Right, and, and, I, thing, and right? I assumed there was a street I could take once I went. I'd never been down Sycamore. I'd looked down there, but I'd never driven down there, and I was assuming there was a street I could cut. But as I went farther down, it kind of looked like it veered off, and maybe there wasn't a street that would get me back to Broad. So that's when I thought I need to just cut through these apartments, through the parking lot. Right. And as I understand, uh, as you indicated there, as you uh, went down that particular road and got to those apartments, that the apartment talked about that, that area that you're talking about turning into to go over to Atlanta Highway, that's when you saw these two vehicles. Correct. correct. Mm -hmm. And you indicated, uh, as you said, you saw that uh, red SUV kind of coming out of that area. Is that correct? Correct. And you described that as an exit, but it's kind of an exit entrance. Am I right? Correct. It's the same same little path you take, whether you're going in or going out. And you were behind, according to your memory, you were behind the officer. Correct. The patrol vehicle, right? Yeah. And that the officer's patrol vehicle was kind of turning in. Correct. Right? And uh, at the time you noticed them, you noticed basically, as you said, they were kind of coming in as if in a T-bone fashion, right? Almost, right. Right. It wasn't like they were necessarily being blocked at all. It's just like one was kind of coming in and one was coming out at the point you saw it, correct? Right. It looked to me like 
one was exiting and one was entering, but there wasn't enough room for both to fit through there at the same time. Sure. And you noticed uh, the officer being an African-American officer that was by himself in his vehicle. Uh, I, I didn't notice it at, right at that point, but after the red vehicle, I noticed the driver in the red vehicle was African-American with a white t-shirt on, and he pulled over, and then when the officer turned to pull over beside, <clears throat> beside the, uh, the red car, I noticed he was African-American, yes. Sure. And, uh, and I think as you indicated, you couldn't tell <laughs> where you were anybody else was in that red SUV other than the driver at that time, right? Right. At that moment, I couldn't tell. Right. And so you saw the red SUV kind of come over <coughs> into the area of that other apartment complex. It wasn't directly across the street, but just down. Just Offset kind of, right? just Offset. a little bit. Right. right. And uh, the patrol officer's vehicle, you don't know whether it backed up or not. It could have backed up a little bit to make that turn or just could have had and kind of made up somewhat of a U-type turn to right. pull in somewhat behind him, correct? Right. And that was when you noticed the, uh, the patrol officer being African American. Is that That's right? correct. Mm -hmm. And I think you uh, had indicated before in your statement and otherwise that you proceeded to kind of turn into that entrance exit of, uh, of River's Edge of Town Homes, right? Correct. And, uh, and in fact, as I understand, you were kind of glancing away somewhat on occasion here while you were obviously making negotiating that turn and otherwise. Right. Right. I was mainly concerned with my driving, but I still could see things out of the side of my eye that was happening. You know. Sure. And uh, you noticed at that time somebody come emerge from the passenger side of the red SUV, right? Correct. And uh, that was the first time you saw that individual, right? Correct. And you could tell from everything you saw that that was not the driver, right? Correct. And, uh, and at the time you saw that individual, where was that individual in relation to the red SUV and the patrol car, sir? Uh, kind of between the two? Between the two and about a little bit past the driver's window, like maybe uh, the driver, uh, this is the front of the driver's door and the back of the driver's door is like maybe right in here, close to the back of the front door of the police officer's car. All right. So the first time you saw him, he was kind of towards the, the back of the front driver's side door of the patrol vehicle. Right. Sort of the middle of the car. Okay. That was the first place you saw him. Right. Right? Correct. And at that time, you indicated and displayed to us that you saw him kind of move away, kind of pull away or something to that effect, right? Right. Couldn't see the driver. I think, as you indicated just a little bit ago, whether the driver was reaching out or not reaching out. Fair enough. Right, because I couldn't. I might have been able to see just a little bit of the driver, but for the most part, his view was blocked by the person that was between me and me and the officer. So. Right. And uh, uh, but from what you saw, you thought perhaps the officer reached out, right? Right, or said something. It was something. You know, just to me, it just looked like a little bit of horseplay. You know, that's right. You thought it all appeared to be horseplay, to you, right? Right. And one of the reasons was because the, the person that kind of uh, pulled away, the one outside the car, uh, he had kind of a, a smile on his face, didn't he? It kind of had either a kind of a smile or a smirk, kind of like like that. So that's why they just thought it was right. And that led you to believe that perhaps there was some sort of horseplay going on. Right. Yeah, I figured they probably knew each other. And it's just right. And you didn't uh, uh, notice, you didn't, I mean, the officer didn't get out of the car at all, did he? Not that I saw. He never, never got out of the car. There didn't appear to be any obviously serious altercation that would lead you to believe it was anything but horseplay. Right. From what you saw, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. correct. And at that time, that individual was kind of Work away as you saw that expression on his face. You indicated he kind of moved toward the back of the patrol car at that time. Well, he was he was headed in that direction, and you know I just saw him take like maybe a step and make that movement. Um, but so now he's maybe at the front of the back door of the car, 
but I didn't see him go all the way to the back because at, at that time they went out of my view because I'm making my turn into the. I'm sorry, you're going to have to speak up a little bit and kind of speak toward the jury here, if okay. you will, Mr. Kelly. Um, at that time, he kind of took a step or so that led him to maybe the front of the back door of the patrol car. Right, it looked, or the he, was, of the back he door. was definitely facing the back of the car, so he, and he's kind of taking a step or so, so I'm thinking, you know, I'm not really thinking, but it looks like he's kind of going, you know, he's just kind of stepping away from the guy and he's coming this way, but I did not see him go from like where the back door is to the back of the car because during that time I was, um, my, they went out of my vision because I'm turning to my right to turn into the apartment complex. So they really went, I you know, didn't, didn't see anything see for a little while. But a few seconds. Some, at some point though, <laughs> you looked back and you saw him, right? When I heard the pop, okay. so I'm going straight. I'm made my turn and I'm pulling up into the apartment complex, and I hear a pop. So that's when I turn and look back. And and when you did, you look back and you saw the guy that had kind of pulled away at the trunk of the car. Right. He Isn't was. That right. That's correct. And he was kind of, I think, as you said uh, uh, just a few minutes ago, he was at the back corner of the patrol vehicle, kind of crouched. Is that correct? Is that That's what you correct. said? That's correct. And what do you mean by crouched, sir? Well, this is the trunk of the car. Uh, he was kind of like this, but he wasn't really in the middle. He was more over towards, not really quite on the corner, but he was closer to this corner of the car than that corner. But here's the trunk kind of down like this. And he's made a step or two like, you know, like, am I going this way or am I going this way? Yes. And at that time, you saw him go back to the car, toward the front of the car, didn't you? Right. No objection, that's Ms. Lee. He never said that. He said he seen him go around the car, five shots on the other side. That's Ms. Lee, what he said. No, no, I had the witness on the car. Well, in order to get back to the car, you want to go around the car, according to you, right? Right. And, and, and according to what you remembered at that time, he went around to the passenger side of the patrol vehicle. That's what you recall. Right. right? That's what I recall, right? Okay. And it was at that time you heard uh, more sounds? Well, I, he raised his arm up and I saw the gun, you know, for, and I guess almost simultaneously when I raised the gun, then the first shot, and then I think two more. I can't remember the exact number, but um, at least two shots, maybe three. And your memory is that he was on the passenger side of that same patrol car. That's what you're remembering at right. this point? Right, right. Okay. And uh, your car was positioned, you had come into that River's Edge complex, and how far had you gotten into that complex at the time you saw that, sir? Um, not very far. I just I made my turn in and just going a few feet forward when I heard the pop. So I, I still have my car in drive, but I took my foot off the gas and I turned and looked. So I was maybe uh, as far as from here, the officer in the back from from where the from the witness stand all the way to the back of the courtroom here to the back wall of the courtroom. Right. From Is that my, right. Probably not any farther than it, maybe not much closer either. I'd say that's about the right distance right there, which is close enough, you know. second um, I was kind of stunned when it happened but I'm still looking at what's going on and the guy finished shooting and he took a couple steps right in the direction of my vehicle that's so, right. so that concerns me so that's when I remember I remember looking down to make sure I had my foot on the 
gas because I'm I am getting ready to like get out of there. But right at that moment, the guy looks. He's right. The sycamore is right here. He took a couple steps forward. He's right to sycamore, and he looks to his right, and then he just took off to his left. And uh, at the time that you saw him raise the gun up and shoot it into the car, right? At that time, he was about four feet away from that car, wasn't he? Right, four or five feet back from the car, if I as I recall. Yes. And uh, then you saw him at that point, you said, kind of, did he come back toward the back of the car, toward your memory? Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. And that's when he kind of looked up Sycamore, like toward Broad. Correct. Is that right? <laughs> and then he looked down and, and took off running. Did you see him run, actually, or did you? Right, he just kind of looked to the right, and then he just ran to his left. It's almost like he didn't even look to his left. He just ran to the left. It was very quick, it was very quick. But and you don't recall hearing any more shots after that, do you? No, I no. don't. And then after that happened and you saw him run, is that when you wound up leaving or did you kind of just stay right. for a moment and well, kind of stunned? Or yeah, I kind of pulled up, I pulled up the, the parking lot a little bit farther and I saw that I could get on the broad because I had for a split second I thought maybe I'm trapped in here maybe this is like a dead end or something but I realized I can pull out into the traffic and it, but I'm thinking should I back up to what just happened but then I, you know the guy when when he took off running he kind of there were some bushes there and then another building so he went out of my sight but I'm thinking maybe he'll turn around and come back so maybe I better not back down and plus I, I knew that the police car up there in the street was probably coming back down to the take care of that officer, and um, I thought, well, maybe I should sit here, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe he can circle around this building and come right back to where I am and shoot me, so that's when I made the decision to go ahead and pull out into traffic and, and leave the scene. And the description of that, that description of individual that you uh, uh, gave out, I think, at some point was, he was an African-American male, right? Correct. Uh, muscular build. Right. Shaved head, right? Right. Small amount of facial hair, right? I don't think I said that. You don't remember that? No, it's too far away, I think. You remember him uh, saying he was wearing some denim shorts? Well, dark shorts. Dark I mean, shorts? Yeah, okay. dark, dark shorts and a light, and a light colored shirt. Yes, sir. And uh, you remembered later that he uh, appeared to be barefoot? That's kind of what I thought. I'm, I'm, you know, I couldn't swear to that. But. Yes, sir. And as I understand that you uh, wound up driving home at that time, correct? Correct. I didn't have my cell phone with me. And right. Like I say, I tried to get back to the scene, and I, after a few minutes, I couldn't get back because they had everything blocked off. So. Yes, sir. And so you had left then and went up to, uh, did you go up to Broad and turn left on, on Hawthorne, or did you right. just cut through behind McDonald? No, I went up, I ended up somehow just in the left lane, and so still you know kind of a little bit in shock and so I, you know, the light turned green to go left so I just went left and went down Hawthorne and after that where did you go on Hawthorne sir I uh, some business parking lot I can't remember if it, it wasn't the Y but it might have been the Burger King or it may have been something right before that but it was a parking lot there along Hawthorne a couple blocks down Right before Hawthorne runs into Prince Avenue or one. Before it got to Prince, right. Right. And uh, there's like a Bell's food store there and some right. other shopping center and the uh, the Burger King is right there next to it. Right. Right? Okay. And by that time I heard fire trucks and ambulances and stuff, so I knew it was probably. Had you already good. gone back to the, the scene, the area there, and, and when you saw it kind of locked off at the time? And then after I sat in the parking lot for a minute, and first of all, I looked, kind of looked through my car to make sure I didn't have my phone, because I thought, well, maybe I have my phone here, but I didn't. So that's when I drove back down Hawthorne, but by the time I got to the intersection of Hawthorne and Broad, they, they had things blocked that you couldn't get in, and there was traffic people directing you to, they said, you can't, you can't go down this road or whatever, so. That's when I decided the best option might be just to, to drive home and make the phone call from home. And you went home and looked on the internet, see if right. you see something, is that correct? Right. Right. And um, I think as I understand, um, 
you, uh, uh, one of the concerns you had about calling, I guess. Good. I object. They can say, he said, looking on the internet. So if I couldn't talk about looking at the news, maybe he can't talk about what we seen on the internet. Go ahead, he'll say. Go into any content. shooting was still on the loose. That's right. <laughs> and uh, you were concerned that you'd be harmed if you gave your information about the incident without him being arrested. Wasn't that the concern? No, I want to give the information. I just didn't want my name to show up in the newspaper sure. and my address and all that stuff while he was still out there. That's right. And um, and you indicated you had tried to call a tip line and that kind of stuff. and. Uh, or you what an answering or whatever. Right. And that was the tip line you got from the internet. Is that what right. it was? That's okay. Correct. Um, and at some point I think you said you called the uh, the agent in charge that you thought were in charge with the FBI. Yeah, the field agent. That's Rick Maxwell. That was reported on the, in the news that he was the FBI agent in charge of that case. In, in Atlanta? May have been incorrect. Yeah, he's, a, he's in Atlanta. Based out of Atlanta, but apparently he was, that was his case or something. I don't know. I just saw his name, so that's why I called and asked for him. So you called a number in Atlanta of the FBI office for uh, an agent you thought was in charge of the investigation, the FBI agent in charge of the investigation, a guy named Rick Maxwell. Correct. Okay. And uh, the number you called, I think you had indicated that. What was that number? I can't remember that. 678 number? I, don't, I got it written down at home, but I don't remember. And then recording, you had indicated what that was. Right. Right, okay. Yeah, I took my numbers when I talked to Miss Thomas. I had all the numbers I had called. And uh, the, uh, but it was an Atlanta number, right? Right. Yeah, I didn't know if there was an FBI number in Athens, so I just called the Atlanta right. office. Okay. Because you believe, you thought the FBI was in charge of the investigation. Right. From, from what the news reports, it said that that guy was in charge. Right. Okay. That may have been incorrect, but that's what I what I read. So that guy, that's why I you, called and asked for him. Sure. And I think, uh, but. You had indicated you thought it was, uh, they took a couple weeks to get back to you, right? Well, it was, it seemed to me like a couple weeks between the shooting until I got to talk to somebody, but I guess it turned out it was just eight days. Right, sure. And uh, I think you said that you had some concerns about the fact that, uh, uh, that somehow the officers that, that, that you saw up there at West Broad and Sycamore about how they would let you through at that point. Uh, you thought that that wasn't perhaps correct, that some officer up there shouldn't have let you through on the sycamore at, before this shooting. Isn't that what you indicated? As a concern? Yeah, I had some concern that they let me drive down into that situation. Right. <clears throat> you know, I think anybody would. Sure. And uh, of course, that assumed that they knew that there was a situation. Right. 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 Okay. Let me show you, if I can, what, what our mark is, say, specific number. First one will be 1177. Second one will be 1178. And before I do that, 
think as you were talking to the agent or at some point either you know, while you were talking to her or maybe at the end at some point you drew some sketches am I right? right. Like kind of what you remembered at that time correct? The location of the vehicles and all that. Sure and uh, let me show you what's been marked with state exhibits 1177 and 1178. See docket number one and number two. I don't see any of those other numbers. Well, the oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, 1177. Yeah. Sketch number one is the first one, 1177. Right. Sketch number two is 1178. You see that? Right. And those are the sketches that you drew on that day with Agent Thomas? Correct. That right? Okay. And I would tender those two uh, exhibits into evidence at this time. Sure. I guess not. Sir, you have your laser pointer. I'm going to use this right here if I can. Space is at 1177. Your Honor, Your Honor, can I take a one-minute restroom break? Yes. Thank you. 